Now this one, as I told you, is I would bring up one that was a consulting client of mine quite a while back. You know, I'm, I've gotten old, so it's, <laughs> this has probably been a good 10 years now. But this was in Southern California, and it was a five plex. Now, I, uh, uh, and he, he just wanted help putting this deal together and just some feedback and some guidance, even though he found the property, but then he was, um, I can't remember why he thought he needed my help, but I'll just remember I was involved in helping him put this deal together. He says, you know, it's really, okay, up at the top you see that it's a multifamily fiveplex for, it. market value at that time was 500,000, about $100,000 $100, a door. But she wanted the, this, he'd been working her and working her and working her, older lady, and she just had to have 650. And so I said, well, what do you want to do? Uh, do you, what kind of terms do you think you can get? And so we worked with us around, like what would your payment have to be? Let's just pretend you don't care about price. What would your payment have to be that you could cash flow this thing or it would at least cover itself? And so we worked that out. So he only had to put he paid 150000 over market, and he's never looked back. He's been so happy with this deal. So let's look at it. 5% down on a multifamily. Now that's great, right? If you went to the bank to get a loan, they're going to want, I don't know, 35% down? <laughs> 25 to 35% down. So with the calculator here. So basically 650, and if it was 5% down, we're gonna do 0.95, because it's a 95% loan. 617.5. Um, there's another nice 3.5% interest rate. Okay, and the payment had to be around that, you know, 2,000, 2,100. So you know what she did? This lady, to get her price, now, what do you want to bet? She made a, she was at Thanksgiving one year and said, and someone told her she missed the top of the market. And she says, no, I'm going to get my price. What do you bet? It's just like, I told so-and-so I was going to get my price. And by golly, I'm going to do it. She was willing to fully amortize this over 50 years. So I'm going to do 50 times 12 months each. We got 600 months. So that's N in term. Fully amortized means there's no balloon at the end. This is future value. So we solved for that payment and he could live with that. Can you believe that? So I'm just telling you, don't think you just, you have to do everything by what the banks do, like a 30 year fix. You can just ask for what you want and see if it works for both parties. So the deal on this, he was, the gross rents were about, I hope the numbers work out. I want to say it was about 1,200 a door. Yeah. Okay. Um, so gross rents, and I'm sure he was going to fix them up and, you know, increase the rents over, over time. But he put, tw uh, so then 6,000 and basically he's going to decide 40% of that right off the top goes to reserves right? For taxes, insurance, repairs, so that the property pays for itself. That's the job of a house or a property is to pay for itself, okay? So you don't want it to come knocking at your door. This goes in a separate account so that the money's always there for, you know, the surprise repairs or it's time to do the roof or the big, the big things that need to be done. That's just wise to do. Of course, his debt service was 2181, and that left him, look at this, 1400 cash flow on a property that he, um, he paid 150,000 too much for, right? So there again, what was, but he, we, we don't need to assume that other people think the way that we do, okay? So they, she didn't need the money. 
she was sick of managing the property and he just kept after her and after her until they came to an agreement. She didn't care about the down payment money. She wasn't, she liked him, she trusted him. Uh, she didn't, you know, the cash flow didn't matter. All that mattered is she got her price and she didn't have to manage the property anymore. So never be scared to ask for things that you want. <laughs> when he got this, I was literally floored though. I'm like, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. Now let's just see if she changed her mind. Let's just see a 50 year amortization at three and a half percent fully amortized. If she died and her heirs and beneficiaries wanted to sell this note, and let's just pretend that maybe two years had gone by, minus 24. So now we have 576 payments. And what if the investor only needed an 8% return? It was very modest, right? Over the next 50 years. Well, let's see what the price the note buyer would pay. Wow, 50 cents, right? Uh, it's more likely for someone to go out this long, they might need more like 10%. And now they're, you know, that's getting pretty skinny. So you can see that she got the sales price. She got the money she wanted on the sale, but it wasn't present value benefit, right? It, the value was really in the length of it. Oops, let me recreate this and just show you over the term what she'd be getting. Over the term, 1.3 million, okay? 1.3 million, but not if she tries to sell the note and, and has to discount those future payments because think of it like, I would take all night to scroll down to the end, but. In 50 years, do you think $2,000 will buy the same or less than what it buys now? Okay, so statistically speaking though, usually people sell properties before, you know, 30 years even. So statistically speaking, it probably would have paid off. He'd have not refinanced, but if he decided he wanted to sell the property, let's say it had appreciated in value or something happened and he just didn't wanted to get out of it, um, he might have sold, but his best way to sell it would be to see if he could get the seller to keep carrying the paper for the next buyer, right? Because that's where the juice is, making this property worth a lot more than its supposed market value. Any comments, questions? chats or anything I need to know about. Well, I'll take a little sip of water here. Uh, 1400 out the gate cash flow. That's even with 40% reserve. So even if you're wrong and you have to spend more than 40% on taxes, insurance, and you know, your maintenance, you got some breathing room there, huh? And so he was gonna hold this forever and ever. I'm pretty sure he still has it. Although I haven't talked to him about it in a bit hey don one other thing one other thing don on this here is, is a good thing just like what you did on the very first um example a lot of times things happen in that period of time over two three four five years or more and that and that the uh, buyer of that note might be able to buy that note back at a really good discount if they needed the money so that's another good thing yeah that that's buyer. true so you're talking about and i you know, I honestly don't remember it's been that long, but I would presume that I we had him put a first rider refusal to buy the note at the same price that any other arm's length note buyer would, you know, quote in writing. Right. Uh, if we didn't- I think the 1.2 million that you had down was the total return of the note over 50 years. Yeah, it was 1.3 million. Uh, well, yeah, 1.3. Full, fully amortized. So basically, right, right. you know, for for a property that's market value is 500,000, over time they would get 1.3 million. But we're, uh, you know, that's without accounting for the the time value of money and the value of those future payments. 
So the, anything that you start, the longer you go out, the less those future payments are worth in terms of today's dollars. But for the person, if the person doesn't have to sell the note, they, she got the, she got 150,000 more for the property. So she has a cushion in there, right? So someone's happy with that. Okay. All right. So there's some inflation. There's some time value money, but she also got 150,000 more for her property. And Ken, you know, this reminds me of your deal that you were sharing where you, you pulled 200 grand of equity out of thin air by being willing to carry it. What was it? 6% on that uh, retail office building you sold? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's 6%, 6%. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so so you you created market conditions if someone had to pay cash or get a 10% loan, they couldn't pay couldn't have paid your price, right? So you what was most important to you was getting your price and getting the cash flow, you're in a secure position. And so there you did. You pulled out equity, 200,000 like you know, rabbit out of the hat. So that's phenomenal. And you're no you're under no illusion. You're you're you didn't create that note to sell it. You know, you're well capitalized. So uh you wouldn't be in the market to sell that note. But if you had to, you could, right? Because it's still pretty solid. Or something happened to you and you know, your wife and kids or something needed to, it's uh you know, they can still get a fair amount of money out of it. 